Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Clydesdale Chronicles with Coach Cheryl. I am Scott. I am the Clydesdale. She is Coach Cheryl. And we have worked together to lose nearly 65 pounds over the last year. And this is just a little chronicle of what happened during that journey so we can share with others and and make it so others may have the um, courage to do the same thing I did. 100%. 100%. And I, and I, I know we got a specific topic, but as you just said that I was getting goosebumps because 65 pounds, man, like that hundred pound mark is coming. And, and I think if people can just take your story and realize like patience pays off, that's really what it is. Slow and steady wins the race anytime. Yeah. So. And I'm sure we'll get into like my crazy schedule over that year yeah. um, in a future episode, but it's yeah. not a linear journey at all. And, and that's the first thing you have to know going into this. But the topic we're going to talk about today is I, I started CrossFit in 2011 um, with my next door neighbor who owned a gym affiliate, uh, a CrossFit affiliate. Um, he worked me out in the neighborhood for about five months before we went to the gym. Um, that story has been chronicled um, on CrossFit's uh, documentary, if you want to check that out. But I was there until... Um, in the middle of COVID, the middle of COVID, um, I decided to stop going um, because I had elderly parents who were very sick. I didn't want to take anything to them. And during that time, I really kind of felt like not going back to that gym again. And I kind of want to walk through that process because this was very early on when I met um, Cheryl. So I met Cheryl in January of 2021. Uh, we we started, I think, late January working together. Um, it was February when I decided that I needed uh, a change. And that change was very, very, very difficult for me. Um, I had made so many friends at the old gym. Um, I felt like a part of the gym. And probably one of my biggest mistakes, I was so invested in that gym. Because when I first started, there were like 15 members. Right. And I was one of those first people to join. Um, and we became super tight and super close. Um, and then in 2020, they were a gym of almost 300 people. So the problem was, is um, for those who don't know my story, I lost a considerable amount of weight um, from 2011 to 2016. Um, I went from over 500 pounds to 260. Um, and then I had a back injury, things kind of unraveled, and I started gaining weight. And with that, I kept feeling like a failure every time I would go to the gym and not be what I used to be. And so um, as I was, gonna, I was getting ready to start a new journey, I felt like I needed a fresh start. But to leave all those people behind was very hard for me. And so I reached out to Cheryl and we had a lot of lengthy discussions about what I should do. Um, And she was very supportive in me getting a fresh start. And what was going through your mind, Cheryl, when I was going through all this, these issues and trying to make that decision? Well, it's like, there's so many things to unpack, right? And even going back to why you originally left the gym, you know, like it was COVID, you had sick parents, you were already on this path to like, almost like not intentional self-destruction. You were, you know, obviously it was a really tough year for you. And, and honestly, I think the biggest thing was I knew we had to get you back to a gym and I knew we had to get you back to a gym, but there was also, I felt like a level of pressure that could have been removed from you because you hadn't been there in so long. So it wasn't like this fresh start of like, I was here last week and now I've got to go switch gyms to, cause we all in the CrossFit community know how uncomfortable it is when you you're with these people every day. And if you work out in CrossFit, you don't just work out by yourself. There's people that you go to the gym and you're excited to see, and you're excited to, you know, bump fists with and and cheer them on for their last burpee. And, And it was all of that, that you were almost missing, but also like almost probably feeling a little bit guilty. Like you were okay with going into a new gym and starting over fresh, because for you, that was the right thing. And so I think the main thing that I wanted you to get out of that first conversation is, 
at the end of it all, doing what's best for you does not mean you don't care about others. And often it means you care about them more than you think you do because you protecting yourself is not a reflection of how you care about those people and and you can still be a part of them but for you you needed something better to be excited to be in that gym again to be able to go back there and and be a part of that community without all of this other baggage in your head from previous experiences or 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 even the thoughts of like i left and i got to come back and i related so much to what it felt like to feel like you were at the top of it all and feeling like you just watched everything crumble because in a different area in my life, I had felt that with CrossFit. I had, you know, gotten really, really strong and really, really fit and had just like you had, had wondered, God, if I had just kept going, where would I be today? How different would my life be if I hadn't had that happen to me or, or had this big setback. And I, and I related to that. And I knew that a fresh start wasn't you saying that all of that didn't matter It was you saying that I'm going to protect that chapter of my life and I'm going to go ahead and start a new one. And preserving that is what you needed to do to make further growth for yourself. And I think of myself and everything that's happened to me in that exact same way. So that was my real thoughts for you was getting you to understand it was okay to do what felt right intuitively to you. You actually said something to me in that first conversation that really struck a chord and it was You have to stop competing with who you were. We're going to make a new version of you that's even better. And and every time I walked into the old gym, I always felt like I was competing with who I was. Mm -hmm. Because all your friends know, and I'm not saying this is like a brag, but they knew what I was before, right? They knew what my strengths and what my weaknesses were and that those were always attached to me. And I probably wasn't mentally strong enough to fight those off at that time. You know, I, I couldn't, I didn't have the willpower to fight through all of that at the time. And that's why I really needed that fresh start because I needed to go to a gym where they didn't know what my back squat number was or what my deadlift number was, or that I used to be able to do string pull-ups together right? Like I didn't need them to know all that. I wanted to start with really good coaching. Like I had never been in the gym before to make sure that I wasn't going to get hurt again. Yeah. And there was two things that you just said that made me just, I had to, I had to stop and make sure I wrote that down is one is you're absolutely right. We can never go back in, in time. And it's something that was so hard for me to realize. And I would do the same thing with myself when I look at how my competitors were continuing to excel and I had regressed. And I knew how shitty that felt because I had experienced it. And I didn't want that for you. I wanted you to have that fresh start. And I think it comes down to something else that I wanted to point out that I didn't point out on that phone call that just made me think about how other people can really relate to this is oftentimes we do, we go back, God, if I could just get back to where I was, where I was. And I realized in that moment when you said that is that we often measure ourselves by our results and what people think of what we can do, our, our performance, how we look, all the things that we've achieved in life. That's not who we are. That is not who you are. You are somebody who had to fight tooth and nail to lose a lot of weight, to overcome losing your father, to having to restart something that leaving a community, all of those things are things that have shaped you as a person who is a fighter. That's who you are. You're somebody who has a bigger piece of you here. And all the things you can do are only what people see. You know, it's like, it's what is the saying that like everybody thinks that, you know, legends are made when they see them on the, with the gold medals. That's not, that's not what makes them great. So they're doing behind the scenes that nobody sees. Tracking your food in an app, you know, being disciplined with that. When you're using your food scale, saying no to those, those are the things that matter. Taking the time to say, hey, I'm going to switch gyms. Being that person that had to, had to make that difficult decision is why you are a fighter. So that was it. Yeah. And, I, and just to kind of wrap this up with a bow, you know, I was a coach at the other gym. I was, like I said, I was very invested And I think a lot of times in CrossFit gyms, if you're a coach, you're the last person that gets coaching. Yeah, it's so true. 
right? Because because you you've been through the L one, you've been trained through whoever owns that gym to 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 know all the movement standards and all the techniques. And there there's all especially when you're a gym of three hundred people, there's new people coming in all the time that need so much more focus and attention. And and that leaves the coach kind of left behind. Yep. Well, I, I feel like as an athlete, I understand that because I bet you there are injuries that I've had in the past that likely wouldn't have happened had somebody been over there and said to me like, hey, you're, you probably should be doing that a little bit differently. I'm watching your shoulder do that or I'm watching your knee cave in, like whatever. But they're like, oh, she's a freaking CrossFit Games athlete. So whatever, you know, and even if it's something small, you know, like we all need coaching. I, I, I encourage people to tell me, even if I'm not holding the standards on a movement, like if they see, like, tell me if I don't, if I'm not doing something intentionally. So, you know, but I, I agree that that is something that you needed. And I, I'm so happy. So, so are you going to explain what gym you're at now and how everything's going now? Or are we gonna, are we gonna well, I want to give an example of like where I did get coaching today, this afternoon. Um, my, my best movement is squatting, right? I, I can squat pretty well. And we were doing back squat, back squats today. And I'm, I had surgery in December, so I'm very, very light on it. But the coach came up to me and said, you know what? On uh, Coming out of the, the hole, you have a little bit of a forward lean. And you may want to just watch that because that's going to stress your back. You want to get that chest up and, and really be strong. And just that little bit changed everything for me today, right? And that's what I needed. I needed those little... I'm a good mover. I needed the fine tuning to make sure that things don't go awry again. And so I'm at an amazing gym and I don't want to take anything away from the old gym. And I've said this a million times. They do a wonderful job for a lot of people. I just needed a change and I needed a fresh start. And it means nothing about the coaching there or the facility itself. But I am lucky enough to be at a gym now, CrossFit Polaris, owned by Christy O'Connell, multi-games um, athlete, multi top 10 games finisher, um, and her husband, Patrick, who is her coach. Um, they care so much about the community. Um, it is really a fun place to be. And I am lucky to have the level of coaching that I'm getting today. Well, that was what I was going to get at. Is I, I think that her credentials aside, I, I just think that, you know, just following them on social media, they just seem like they're very community oriented. It looks like they jump in with the classes and all that kinds of stuff. You know, everything that she does is is at the gym and, I, and i'll be honest not to get off on a tangent but i think she's one of the very few crossfit athletes that actually still works like that actually still gets to the gym opens the gym mops the gym cleans the gym all that stuff and a lot of people don't understand that that's something that's very hard to do so i can relate to that and i think it's awesome so a little tangent on my yeah. hair but yeah she coached my class saturday and yeah. she joined my class today so a little fun story um it was an all body weight wor workout today, um, AMRAP. I think I was starting round two as she was finishing round three, and that was about <laughs> that was about three minutes in. <laughs> I love I love those stories. Those are great. Those are always fun. Or like it's it's I will be honest. It's very uncomfortable when I'm doing this with people and I'm like doing a running workout and I'm literally a whole when I when I start catching up on something I'm gonna laugh. I'm like. I don't want to make them feel bad. It's not my level of fitness that's a dictation of theirs, but I can relate to that. So anyways. Yeah. And she was doing RX plus and I was doing scaled. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. But it's, it's fun seeing that, especially with what I do. Um, and they're just great people. Yeah. Uh, and their dog's amazing. Like everything about the gym is just awesome. So. Glad I made the decision. It was a tough choice at the time. And really a year out from that decision, I see more clearly what what part I played and why I needed to go. It wasn't just about the other gym. It was about me and where I was in my journey and why I needed the fresh start. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was Like I said, it was putting a chapter away and starting a new one. Well, this has been a fun conversation. Um, we'll probably dive into the schedule aspect that we kind of mentioned um, next time that Cheryl and I get together. Um, but we're so excited. Um, right yeah. into the season, right? Yeah, getting into the season again. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining Cheryl and I this week on the Clydesdale or Chron Clydesdale Chronicles with Coach Cheryl. I have too many shows now. I'm like getting all confused. 
Yeah, the Clydesdale Chronicles with Coach Cheryl. We'll see you next time, guys.